Hey ladies and gents, this is Michael with Hourglass Woodworks and I'm coming to you today with some tips and tricks on how to put together these awesome cloudy day style boards. Uh, they've got a ton of depth, a lot of character, and it's a really fun project. So hopefully I can impart some wisdom to you. So uh, stay tuned and we'll check it out. All right, to get started, I actually pour this board in three layers. So uh, with each layer, I'll tell you what I'm using as far as tools and products. So you have an idea of what you might need and give you some tips along the way so you can make a, an awesome piece as well. You'll see in the previous shot, I had some clear fast epoxy from Squid Poxy. And currently I am showing a reusable form, obviously with your uh, lumber of choice. For this piece, I am using pecan. The form you can also get from Squid Poxy. They're great if you don't have one, you just pour tap it out when the epoxy is cured. Very minimal cleanup, super easy to use. I am using the ClearFast product for the first layer, so you will need, uh, you'll need that as well as a mixing cup and a stir stick or a small mixer for your drill. I've already pre-measured the board so I know exactly how much epoxy I am going to need for this first pour. Um, and the ClearFast product is a two to one mixture ratio so you want to make sure that you're using two parts of the part A resin and then uh, one part of the part B hardener. I know I want my clear fast layer to be right around half an inch so I've already pre-measured and I know that's going to take 30 ounces of resin total. So uh, with the two to one ratio I'm mixing in 20 ounces of the part A with 10 ounces of part B. Uh, that way I know that I can plane the wood down a little bit to meet the surface of the epoxy versus planing off a lot of the epoxy, wasting it, wasting money, never ideal. Once you get everything measured out, you want to make sure you mix this slowly and thoroughly. Uh, I mix for a minimum of five minutes and you'll be able to tell when it's ready because you won't see any cloudiness, any cobwebs in the actual epoxy itself. Once thoroughly mixed, we are ready for our pigment and I'm using Eye Candy Origami Color Shift pigment for this. So with these boards, I highly, highly recommend using any sort of color shifting pigment. Uh, what it's going to do is really bring a lot of depth and uh, it's going to introduce a lot of variation in the color. So you can see I have a small measuring spoon just so I can keep a general idea of how much I'm doing with each one. This one is two and a half grams for the 30 ounces of epoxy that I've mixed up. And with the first layer, you want it to be somewhat opaque. You don't want to go so heavy that you can't really see through it. Uh, but I do want to have a, a nice color variation in it. You want to take your time, make sure that the pigment is mixed in thoroughly, that there are no lumps, clumps, anything like that. And you can see, uh, you can see as I'm stirring, as the light hits it, it has a nice blue, white, a little bit of green, a little bit of pink. Uh, there's, there's a lot happening in this and that's one of the reasons why I really love it. And so as I'm starting to pour, you can continue to see how the, the color changes a little bit once the light hits it and once it gets into the mold. This layer of clear fast is going in at right about half an inch. So what I'll do is I'll pour it hit it with a torch, make sure there are no bubbles in it, and then I'm just gonna leave it alone. That's really all you need to do for day one. Uh, we wanna give it about 24 hours to set up. That way the top is still tacky. We don't want it to cure completely. If you do, if something happens, that's not a problem. Just lightly hit it with some 320 sandpaper, make sure and clean off the surface, and then you're ready for day two. But uh, that's it for the first part. We're gonna move on to layer two right now. 
All right, so layer two, we're gonna go back in for another much thinner layer on top of our clear fast. And for this, I'm using the Squid Craft Epoxy. And it's actually perfect for this because it's very thick. And what that's gonna do is allow you to uh, introduce a lot of swirls, a lot of variation. And uh, you can see my supplies here. Again, I have my epoxy. I have three mixing cups, some stir sticks, going back to my eye candy pigment and of course a small torch to get rid of any bubbles. With our first round, uh, we're going to mix up eight ounces total of epoxy. So you can see me measure it out here and I actually have two extra cups. What I'm gonna do is completely mix the squid craft, which is one to one and make sure that that is fully mixed. And then I'm gonna portion that out into these other two cups. Again, you wanna take your time, make sure that you're measuring appropriately, mixing appropriately. And uh, once you do get that mixed up, I'm going to put about two ounces in one cup. And when I get that measured out, I'm gonna set it to the side and I'm gonna put about one ounce in my additional cup. Again, get it poured out and set it to the side. The reason I do this is with the bulk of the epoxy that's left, I'm going to put a very, very light amount of pigment in it. I want it to be almost transparent, uh, but to be able to catch just a little bit of color. With the two ounces, I'm going to use that as my cloud type effect. So I'm going to go really, really heavy in my pigment on that. And then the third cup with the one ounce, I'm actually just going to leave it clear. And that's going to help with uh, a little bit of highlights there. See, going back to my eye candy origami pigment. And again, going to go pretty light in, uh, in the six ounce cup that I have left over. And what I have done is, while I still have it, I'm going really, really heavy in the two ounces. You can see the, uh, the additional amount that I added for a much smaller quantity of epoxy. And just for a, a little bit more contrast, I'm going to use some black diamond ghost blue pigment in here. And it's actually got some diamond effect in it. So that's just going to bring a little more uh, more sparkle, a little more character to it, but you can see here how how lightly and how transparent that the uh, the main portion of epoxy is versus the very heavy pigmented epoxy that I have poured into the the smaller cup. All right, so we're back over to the mold now, and first I am going to pour down the six ounce cup of lightly pigmented epoxy. So that kind of serves as the base for this second layer. Uh, again, keep in mind the craft squid epoxy is very thick, which is great for this application. You just want to kind of take a little bit of extra time to spread it out evenly, just because it doesn't flow as easily as the clear fast or some of the other epoxy products. With that in mind, don't forget that the craft does set up much quicker than most epoxies. I think you probably have about 20, maybe 25 minutes until this really starts to gel beyond a point where it's workable. So while you are taking the time to spread it out, just be cognizant of that. You don't wanna let it sit in the cup too long or take too much time. Once it is spread out, take your torch, make sure and get any of the surface bubbles that might have popped up through the mixing, through the spreading process. And uh, you'll see as I'm torching it, since this mold is white, it's a little bit more difficult to actually see those. So I have a handy dandy flashlight that I like to use in combination with my torch. And that actually helps me see the surface bubbles a little bit better, especially as I'm going over them with the torch. Again, quick passes. You don't want to stay in any one area too long and potentially burn the epoxy. Now comes the fun part. So we have our heavily pigmented epoxy here. And what I'm going to do, actually before I even do anything with it, I'm going to take my torch, 
pop the uh, the bubbles that have risen to the top after my initial mixing. That'll just kind of help as I'm spreading it out to minimize any bubbles. And once that's done, I'm just going to take my stir stick and kind of trace the outline of the lumber here. So one of the techniques that I really like to use is if I can have it run down the actual edges of the lumber as opposed to just pour it on top of the epoxy. That way it kind of catches some of the iridescence and some of the pigment in the crevices of the piece. And when you ultimately put your finish or your top coat on, you'll kind of be able to see that with a little bit of additional character. But again, just uh, kind of running this along the edges and I'm going to, of course, do it on both pieces, but uh, I'm also going to mix in a little bit just in kind of random spots as well to have some additional points of interest and items that will really kind of catch your eye as the light hits them. There's absolutely no scientific process to this part whatsoever. It's really up to you how much you want to put, how little you want to put. Obviously, the more of the heavily pigmented epoxy that you use, it's going to be thicker, be darker, more concentrated in these areas. So it's really up to you. Kind of experiment and do whatever, you know, whatever feels good. You can see here that I am also putting some up in the top corner and then I'm going to put some down in the bottom corner as well. Again, just a couple extra points of interest to uh, kind of highlight and serve as accents for the, uh, the main piece. Now once I got all of the heavily pigmented epoxy down, I'm going to go in with the clear and of course give it a little torch. But what the clear is going to do is just provide a little bit of additional distinction between the heavily pigmented epoxy and the lightly pigmented epoxy. And really what you're trying to do here is just build layers, build contrast, and that's going to help you do that and introduce some additional depth. So all I'm doing is just kind of pouring the clear in the same general pattern, same general outline that I did the heavily pigmented epoxy. And uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just kind of want it to serve as a border or a, a bit of a barrier between those two. Now you can see uh, a little bit of a close up once I have those two layers down, it doesn't look too wild, but uh, you can see how the heavily pigmented did catch some of the areas on the edges of the lumber, and uh, it's really going to retain that and just bring some additional visual interest to that portion of it. And now I am actually to the uh, the most exciting part, which is the uh, the stirring. I am using a dental tool. Uh, you can use several different things here, and uh, you can even use multiple tools. You, if you wanted to use the stir stick, you could. If you wanted to use the dental tool as well, whatever works for you. I chose this because it's going to give me very tight swirls in that. And you can see I'm just going in and very slowly mixing these in. And uh, I'm not just starting from the outside and going in or the inside going out. You really want to have some variation and uh, that's going to really incorporate all three levels of the pigmented epoxies into one another. And that's really what's going to give you that kind of cloudy look to it. Yeah, for day two, uh, you can see that now the swirls are locked in. It's kind of starting to build depth and build character. This craft layer I poured at about 1 16th of an inch, so there wasn't a, a ton of epoxy that I ended up mixing up. Again, about eight ounces total, but we want to give it about four hours or so to set up 
That way we can go in and pour layer three. Back now, testing it out with a stir stick and you can see there's a, a little bit of tackiness to the top of this layer and that's actually perfect for what I wanna do because uh, we're going to go back to the clear fast here. Again, two to one mixture ratio and this is going to serve as kind of a, our top layer. I'm just gonna mix this up, pour it in 100% clear as is and what that's going to do is build just another layer of depth that way you can see really the edges of the lumber and uh, the pieces where that heavily pigmented epoxy caught onto those edges and clung there and so it's just going to help bring a lot more distinction to this piece. There's nothing fancy or special about this step. I mixed up about 24 ounces of the clear fast for this final layer. So with the two to one ratio, that's 16 ounces of part A to eight ounces of part B, and then just poured it right on top. You can see I'm back with my flashlight and my torch just to make sure that I capture any bubbles. And that's really it. I gave it three days to fully cure and now we're ready to demold. You can see there's a little bit of wood showing above. That's exactly what we wanted. So we're gonna take our rubber mallet and just get this guy out of the mold. You can see I kind of break the seal of the edges on all four sides here. Give it a little tap 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 a with the old mallet and then flip it over. You give it a few uh, firm fuds on the bottom and what you'll see is a beautiful workpiece emerge after you have knocked it loose. Good to go. Very, very minimal cleanup, which is one of the things I absolutely love about these reusable molds. And uh, you're ready to start sanding the day away. actually going to skip over the finishing process. Nobody really wants to watch a video of sanding and planing, but you can see the finished product here. And at the very end, I decided to do a seal coat, a flood coat over the top. Uh, and that's really just gonna help build the layers, build depth. And I think this one turned out perfectly. So I really hope that I have uh, encouraged some of you to try this out. And if you do, please do find me on Instagram as Hourglass Woodworks. Tag me, let me know what you came up with, how creative you were able to get. You can, like I said, introduce different colors, different techniques, different tools to swirl. Uh, I used a very small tool to have really tight kind of clouds and swirls here. If you go back to the other board at the beginning of the video, I used a different tool that had bigger swirls to it. So please get creative, let me know how it turns out, let me know your thoughts. And uh, if you like this video, I'm uh, definitely interested in doing more for you guys. So thanks for checking this out and happy creating.